Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Prospect Central 101. My name is Chris, and today joining me we have... Keelan. Daniel! And we're going to be watching some Mac Jones with you guys today. He is a quarterback from the University of Alabama, Crimson Tide, uh, of the SEC Conference. Currently, as of the time of recording, which is December 15th, the number one overall quarterback in terms of grade... Uh, by Pro Football Focus. Uh, so, I know that both of you guys have watched Matt Jones already. Uh, Daniel, we'll start with you on this one. What do you think about Matt Jones from what you've seen? Just briefly, obviously don't like spoil the whole entire video, but uh, <laughs> just uh, like a little brief summary, what you think that we should be watching out for, I guess, as we progress to this video. Okay, I think that this dude has a nice keep ball. I think that we can say that for sure. I think that he's a bit of a classic uh, Alabama quarterback in the sense that he he uh, he makes safe decisions. He doesn't turn the ball over all that often, um, and he gets the ball in the hands of his playmakers. I'm not sure that he has the upside to be anything going a backup. In the NFL. Thank you? Yeah, basically what Daniel said. I mean, he really doesn't have a good arm. I mean, he has the accuracy to throw deep, but his arm is lacking. Um, he's, he kind of struggles under pressure. His mechanics are almost like a slow motion, but um, I'm not going to spoil too much more. I'm clearly not a fan, but I'm willing to give him a second chance and learn something new. I Just for record, we watched Texas A&M, Georgia, and Mississippi State, so if there's any other games that we can watch, we might be able to put one of those on, yep. but obviously we're going to have to duplicate at least one, maybe two. Yep, so we got Ole Miss as the second one, but we are going to start with the Georgia game. Uh, I feel like that's a pretty yep. good place to go to first. Yeah, then we'll see him play Florida. Uh, it's pretty soon here. Oh, okay. Yeah, at least a pretty good stat line. With the exception of the INT. Yeah. From Florida. First album quarterback with back-to-back 400-yard games. Interesting. Number one in YPA. Okay. Oh, why? <laughs> Josh Rosen type beat. Uh, no, actually, this is a little bit different. Because Not he's quite. starting this. He wasn't down. Yeah, he's still throwing this. He's trying to get this off before the pressure. I have no issue with that. The problem is this release just takes a little bit longer than, say, for example, Zach Wilson. Uh, yeah. So he's getting hit as he throws and not throwing as he's getting hit. There's a little bit of a difference there. I also think on that play, his his overall footwork issues come into play in that he's not necessarily bad. It's just clunky and and very mechanical and just slow overall. Yeah, it's kind of hard to call it bad, per se. It just feels really weird and off. Okay, well, I do like this throw. That is a good throw. Nice play fake. I also like his pocket presence. That's something that I know you talk a lot about, Daniel. Uh, so far, doing yeah. a pretty nice job of staying composed in the pocket, and especially uh, as you see this injury rusher here. About to, about to close that gap. So it was a pretty nice ball. Uh, nice tight spiral. And then right on the money, right in front of the receiver, leaning on the team, stride, everything like that. Very, very nice shot. Actually, I should probably just kind of like go and set my thing for more. Okay. 
school. I, w I want to, I don't really like to see him lofting the screen passes. I, or not really screen, more of a, what would you, a swing pass, that's the word. I want to see him put more zip on that ball, like something we, we saw and we liked out of Trevor Lawrence, which obviously he doesn't have the arm that Lawrence does, but still. So. Nice play action. That looked yeah, like that a was drop. not a good throw. It looked like it went right through his hands. Did it? I looked like it went to his left, but I could be wrong. I'm obviously watching on my phone, so. Yeah, it went, went, it went to his hand, but regardless, it's still not a good throw. Yeah, I mean, it's not as bad as I originally thought. It's not terrific, but he, a guy like Waddle, who's supposed to be a first-round pick, probably should have had that. Get out, get out, yep, good. Okay, certainly a little bit more of the accuracy. That was nice, though. I don't think it, that was just dropped. Or not loose or whatever. It's pretty nice. Yeah. As well. That was okay. I would have liked that to be in front of him, not behind him, but. Yeah. I don't mind that. And actually, yeah, let's hold linebacker coming down. So that's not what I was looking for. That's not my frustration here. Daniel, what do you think is why I'm going about this play? Did he threw it into double coverage? No. Well, I don't know what else it would be. Daniel? Um, I think that he... Can I watch the play again? So he doesn't pump fake the guy in front of him, and I think that that's a mistake. And beyond that, I think that the uh, just overall the decision making there to make it to try to make that throw when you really don't have the arm there it is. to make yes. that throw off platform is just not ideal. Yeah. For me, it's all about the arm strength. You've got to have loss to be able to make this throw. It's yeah. not the decision. I, if you if you have the arm to be able to make the throw, there is no reason why you shouldn't be able to throw that ball there. If you're Trevor Lawrence, that's an easy throw and we're... We're resuming a bit. Yeah, I guess I guess I see with the like noodle you arm. The, you have the inside leverage. But yeah, the that's... defender was able to cut that off so easy because he just doesn't have enough force. He doesn't have enough velocity behind the, the football. <coughs> so this, to me, is purely an arm street issue. I don't have any real issue with the decision because, like, even at this point in the play, you see the separation here. That's, what, three yards of separation there? You're a little bit more worried about the guy over the top kind of knocking into him and, and getting his hand in between the ball and the, and the receiver. I'm not really too worried about this guy until you see, like, oh, my gosh, he actually almost undercut the route from, like, four yards short. Yeah. yeah right. I guess but, it's a stronger but, arm like Lawrence, or like Lawrence or even a guy like Wilson or, heck, even Trask makes that throw a lot easier. Right. But I guess I, I consider – Decision in it decision making in the sense that you got to be aware of what tools you're working with here, and he should know that in that situation he doesn't have the, the juice on his arm to throw off platform like that. 
into that type of window. I get it, but at the same time, we were talking about how we like the overcome against from Lawrence to be able to take those those risks and be able to make those plays, too. And we talked about yeah. that with Stafford, and we talked about that with Allen, and we talked about that with all the other guys. Like, okay, yeah, like it's good that you know that you have the arm strength and you're able to take those risks. So it's, it kind of goes both ways. Yeah. But if you, you can't be confident in something that you don't really have. Is what I mean, or you can be, but you shouldn't be, because I mean, Jones can be confident in his arm all he wants. It doesn't mean that he has a great arm. Like he's yeah, getting yeah. the ball out at this I'll point to play. Pink. Yeah, that's fair. It's not double coverage there, so I was wrong. In the NFL, that's a pick, so the question yeah. clear about. Honestly, that should have been a pick in, the, in college, really. Yeah. If it was a half second later when he threw that ball, it would have been. Nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. Holy crap, Oral. That's a nice move. Yeah, that's good. It has to stick so long to get to their receiver. Yeah. This Mac Jones' arm is what people think Kyle Trask's arm is. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, dang. Behind him, like... Uh, it's just... This is not a good ball, even though it gets completed. Like... Yep. He's getting bailed out by the rest, best receiving corner in college football. Yeah. Why? Or can you replay that? Or, yeah, I guess the replay is happening. Oh, he capped it? Yes. What the hell? I thought he threw it and got batted down. I was confused as to what was happening there. No, he just decides to pull Stafford and literally run into his offensive lineman. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool, Mac. Very cool. And here again is where the arm strength issue shows up. And, again, not a decision issue for me, because he very yeah. clearly has his wide receiver with space, and he's already started to slow down by this point. If I were to stop this a frame or half frame earlier, you would see that there's even more separation between these two than there is now. Uh, he has the world of space over here. And... This is going to end up contested. It's a hell of a catch by, the receiver, by Waddle there, but it shouldn't have been that difficult. And it's not that difficult with an NFL quarterback. Yeah, he has a good step or two, especially yeah. in his stride uh, on the defender. And that ball was not only underthrown, but also not really the best in terms of placement either. Because he's also turning for this at the same time. So, like, if you're, like, underthrowing it and coming back, like, that's one thing you can draw a flag off of that. But it's kind of hard to draw a flag when you're trying to turn for the ball at the same time. So, that's actually a really nice adjustment to that throw uh, in the air, too. By by Waddle. Mm -hmm. Why did you throw that back foot? 
Yeah, I, I believe I asked myself the same question the last time I saw that play. I mean, he was kind of being held. I don't really blame him on that. <sighs> That was a, you know, a fine ball. It's like it's a good ball, but it's it's it's. A, it, I still don't love the ball placement because I, I would like that to be in front of Smith, not where he would have to turn to the side to make the play. It makes the possibility if that's an NFL cornerback that's getting knocked out. The ball needs to be in front of the receiver so he he can go up and get it without it getting knocked out by a corner. It's weird because his strength is supposed to be like his accuracy, right? I mean, like being able to like get the ball to a spot, but at the same yeah. time he doesn't have the arm strength. So this is why Keelan. Remember a couple of days ago when I was actually it might have been Daniel when I was going over my uh, football philosophies. Yeah, you that was me. Okay, I think I did it with Daniel too. And the first thing that I said under my personal philosophies for QB is that a quarterback has to have arm strength. Mm -hmm. First thing I said. But, but when I said that wasn't my greatest priority, I didn't mean for it, it, that it had to be, yeah, that it could be this level of arm strength. <laughs> I was more so talking about the fact that it didn't have to be a Josh Allen, Matthew Stafford arm. It could be a Drew Brees, Baker Mayfield arm, and I would still, you know, be be happy with that type of quarterback, Kyle Trask, Joe Burrow. But this is not what I meant by arm not being my biggest priority. If, if you have a noodle arm like Matt Jones, then obviously you're not the guy that I want on my team to be quarterbacking. Um, to just, be just to be fair. clear. And to be fair, there are guys out there that just, that have done just NFL starter quality work without, like, NFL starter quality arms. Like, for example, yeah, Philip Rivers. Yeah, Say what you love about Philip Rivers, uh, especially current year Philip Rivers, but, like, that dude can still play at, like, a an alpha starter quality level, even though he doesn't have an alpha starter quality arm. And I mean, like, late career Peyton Manning is another example of that. But you have to be so gifted in, like, the mental aspects of the game and the placement and the accuracy and knowing exactly what you can and cannot do that is just incredibly difficult. That, that's partially why I guess Gardner Minshew didn't succeed. I mean, he didn't really have an NFL arm, but he also didn't really have the mentals, which really caused the Jaguars to not be successful a lot with him at quarterback. So, yeah, and for I, me, I mean, for me, arm strength is probably the one thing that is the hardest to overcome, especially early on in your career. Yeah. Because the adjustment, like, I mean, we were talking about earlier, like, if you don't get enough on that ball that's picked, like the one play yeah. that we rewound a couple times. Yeah. And, like, the other, the play to, to uh, I think it was Smith in the end zone a couple of plays ago. And getting yeah. that, where the, the, the arc on that thing you need to have, mm -hmm. you need the touch to be able to get there. And to get the touch, you need to be able to have the arm strength to be able to arc that up. So there's all kinds of stuff where the arm strength is really just coming into play, not even just in terms of velocity, but in, even in terms of stretching the field, like horizontally and vertically. Uh, it's it's a question mark whether you can hit all nine zones of the field. And also, that was really, really dumb. Like, to be able to, so we talk about, like, it's, and I'm more so debating the, the strength versus accuracy thing. Because to me, a yeah. good portion of ball placement is caused by arm strength. Right. 
Because if you place the ball at the right spot, then you had the arm strength to be able to get it to that spot at that time. Yeah. So arm strength for me helps create accuracy. You can throw people open with arm strength. You can throw people like on time with arm strength. You can make up like some of those minor gaps. Uh, your wide receivers can adjust in some cases to stronger arm strength. Yeah. Like we see we've seen it so many times with staff. Like staff has such a good arm. His placement isn't always a hundred percent. But like his yeah. he has the arm strength to be able to fit it through those holes. Like his turkey hole ability is so extremely high because he just slips it through those windows. And that's what Josh has made Josh Allen so successful this year. Yep. Is Allen has that arm strength, that devil offense is really doing a nice job of scheming those those holes free. And you're really starting to see him attack that those zones with his arm strength and you're lying a little bit less on those mechanics and the placement. I mean, that's, I mean obviously this is not By the way, go back just what makes no to the sack. This isn't just what makes Mahomes successful either, but he can do that at a very high level. Oh my god, get that ball out, god damn. So I can I just say something exactly about thing. Go for it. Sorry, can can I just say something about this play? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Mac Jones by by virtue of standing there and trying to survey the field rather than being aware of the pocket and stepping up yep. is really putting his his offensive tackles in a really bad spot because yep. the, the edge rushers are going wide on that one. Yep. And, and there's no reason for Mac Jones to not step up into that pocket and make life easier on his offensive tackles. On that play to extend it, yeah. So yeah, you can buy yourself another second and a half just by stepping up and getting that ball out. Yeah. And really, you're getting sandwiched by two edge rushers. You really got to get that ball out. Yeah. Well, look at the timing of the play. True. Like both of these got at least both the ones on screen have already made their cuts. Yeah. Like this ball should probably be out here, or very shortly after. Right now, uh, the guy at the bottom of the screen. And he's not even starting his throwing motion. Which, by the way, is pretty slow. In my honestly, my ideal situation wouldn't even be the this guy because knowing Jones's arm strength at this point, he's just gonna crash down an undercut or I like crash the across guy in the bottom. Throw, man. I'd like to see him go over the top and try and get this guy here on the boundary. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I guess hypothetically, yeah, like, seeing the timing of this, you could probably put it in here to this receiver. Yeah. But this, this guy's not could... looking, so he's not going to be able to catch that. Or or even the guy, the... Yeah, I mean, that's probably the best option right there. Yeah. That ball needs to be out now. Yep. I mean, this is like, yeah, great throw, but I mean, the separation from, I'm guessing that's Devontae Smith, and the fact that the guy uh, trips I here, think that's oh, was it Jalen? And the fact that this guy trips here, like, 
I don't know, was he tricky or was he separated from? It's a nice throw. It's an okay throw. But like, yeah, it's this... not in a bad throw under pressure. Right. Like, uh, I'm not going to fault him for that. That's a, that's a fine throw. That's a NFL caliber throw, but... But also, you got multiple first-round picks uh, on your VC and Claudette doing a lot of work for well, you. Well, yeah. But, but <laughs> there's so many plays of his... To nitpick, but I'm not going to bother nitpicking this one. Yeah. Okay. That's actually a pretty good progression read. Again, it's all arm strength. That's not a bad play until you lead up to that throw. It works. That's a nice play by the tight end, but that's a nice execution until you throw that ball and it's way too short. But uh, like I said, it's a real nice play by whoever the hell that tight end is to make that adjust- or adjustment. That's Devontae Smith. Oh, was yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's Devontae. I'm blind, or I must be thinking of a different play. Maybe I was thinking of the prior play where it went to number 87. But yeah, that was a hell of a play by Devontae Smith. And it's like, it works out, but like, oh my goodness, just the, the lack of, of the inability to push. And, and you got to keep it in mind, we mentioned this in the Lawrence video where a lot of his throws were That's pretty to people that were, like some of his throws were to people who were wide open, but they were perfect throws. Uh, regardless, and they would have been elite throws in the NFL. You got to keep the same mindset here. Yep. You you make that throw in the NFL, it, it's very likely be going to be incomplete or picked oh, that's off. A good throw, though, to be fair. That was pretty nice. Good catch, though. Monte Smith, man, I'm gonna have a lot of fun watching this tape. Yeah, he's awesome. He might very well be my receiver one. I really like Jalen Waddle, and from what I'm seeing so far, it looks like Monte Smith might be even higher than Waddle. Yeah, Waddle is pretty good. I mean, I had him in my round one, in my updated round one. Here. So, um, Keelan, we'll start with you on this. You sure. Take through one game. Yeah, I mean it's basically what I was expecting. I mean, pretty poor arm strength. Uh, I mean, that actually can be good, but it's also not great. It's pretty streaky. His mechanics kind of suck. Um, he's pretty oblivious in the pocket, and I'm just really not not feeling it. Uh, what games do we have on him? Do you mind if we watch the Ole Miss and Auburn game so we get two different games? Yeah. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm going to speak about the things that I do like about this this guy. Uh, he does have a little bit of touch to him. Uh, he does make okay decisions. And he does have a feel for the general mechanics of how to navigate a pocket. But just as lot. There's a lot of holes in this game, like you were know saying. Based on what I what I've heard about him, like I, I definitely think he knows what he's what he's doing in football. I think he's gonna be very like a coach one day. 
So yeah, I'm really not sure about, uh, you know, his future as an NFL quarterback. So what would you guys say separates Kyle Trask from him? What makes Easy. Kyle Trask better than Matt Jones? Um, ball play Trask. Uh, uh, you go first, Daniel. That's fine. Trask is better at everything. <laughs> Sorry, but like, there's not a single thing that, that I can say about Kyle Trask that I can say about that I can't that I can't say no, sorry. There's not a single thing that I can say about Mac Jones positively that I can't say equal or greater than Kyle Tra- for Kyle Trask. He has better ball placement, he has better arm strength, he has better awareness of what he's doing in the pocket. His footwork is better, it's crisper, it's faster. Just overall, there's just a lot of difference between them. Yeah. Um, Basically, for me, it's Trask is really better at just about everything. Where, to me, it's almost like Mac is Trask like. Trask doesn't have the cannon of an arm as, you know, like a Stafford or a or a, a Mahomes or an Allen or even a Lawrence. But Trask has elite ball placement. He has elite pocket presence. He he knows how to maneuver the pocket. He has, you know, an acceptable arm, like I said. Uh, he makes good decisions, and he's genuinely a pro-ready prospect where Matt Jones seems to be more of a backup type of guy. Um... If I may, Chris, do you think that do you think that the two are comparable or I think they're similar stylistically. I think they're both guys who are gonna be predominantly, if not exclusively pocket passers, uh, who rely on their placement and accuracy to be successful. I think that Trask is a better version of that, but I still have uh, similar theories about their style of play. Uh, it's not exactly particularly my type yeah. of quarterback. Fair enough. My QB, um, oh, what's it called? What do you use the word for? I'm completely blanking. Philosophies. My QB philosophy is, have been changing, especially since I've been watching a lot more Lions lately, which results in Stafford as well. As I've been watching a lot of older Colts games with Manny, so I'm definitely starting to favor more of that stronger armed guy more than I was, say, even like last year. So I'm um, I'm definitely looking forward. You know, I'm I'm definitely more favoring of a a stronger armed guy now. Like really? No, oh, dear. What the hell was that? A dying duck. And that was fine, but that's an easy throw. My grandma can make that throw. Yikes. Bro. Hold up a second. <sighs> Where even is the ball? Oh, well, it's like right here. <laughs> oh, I see. Mm. I see. That's unfortunate. Yeah, that's something. It's like in the air. It's not like on the ground, obviously. Yeah. But, like... I'm sure at least one of you has to see what I'm seeing here, right? I mean, like, it's not a lot of arc on it. It's just, I'm not sure it doesn't have to deal exactly. with this. What, what are you seeing in the gaki, Chris? 
O... Yeah, you just just go for the deepest option when there are open options available. Like, you have your number one receiver that has, like, a freaking time mile long freaking window here. Um, like, the lack of. Was he being pressured? Like, did he have to get this out? No. Tight ends look pretty good read. Well, I mean, the tight end, so my thing with the tight end is both of these guys are going to be crashing on the tight end. Especially when you throw that, so it's kind of hard to throw that, especially short. Whereas, yeah. like, this guy, if he's crashing down, you have your freaking number one wide receiver running into, yeah. like, a freaking 10 mile long field of grass here. Yeah, Jimmy Taylor, is that Waddle or Smith? That's six. That's not I, I don't know. It doesn't matter who it is. Regardless, they're both top 20 draft picks. I think this was after Waddle had broken his leg or whatever it was. Oh, that's right. <clears throat> but still, yeah. I mean, Smith is a top 15 draft pick, in my opinion. I haven't watched too much teeth, but from what I've seen in live games, I don't know why you can't trust him or... There you go. Okay. That's not, 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 not bad, so. I mean, dude's literally wide open. Yeah, well, you gotta compliment him when you can. Well, I mean, this is just purely isolate quarters. Or cover four, or whatever that is. He's just faster than everyone else. It's easy to see why they fire him those on. Yeah. If you're not on quarters, at least run it properly. Why? This is, weird. is he like a freak of a turnover? Like he's open. He has space. What is the point of throwing this into the ground? Like, if he's, like, double covered or whatever, then fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it worked, but it could have very well easily just been like, what are you doing? <laughs> I think I've seen get Tom, get number one a map. I think I've seen Tom Brady run a better route <laughs> as a wide receiver. <laughs> I just saw him change the direction there. This dude is gonna have like a freaking five percent RAS. The three I can't. Uh, I, I hope for his sake he doesn't run the three cone or shuttle. Yeah. But anyways, get that corner or that defensive back on that play trying to tackle him up map. Looking like Jeff Okuda out here. He's kind of held. Yeah, that was blatant P.I. Okay, good screen passer. Okay, nice pocket presence. Not the worst throw ever either. Very good play. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, it's a nice play of pocket maneuver. That was probably one of his better reps of of the, the film session. Oh, you gotta catch I that. See. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's there. So that's a guy that's probably going to be drafted first round next year. Yeah, he shows some aptitude for moving around in the pocket. I mean, he's not completely incapable. Like, he's definitely going to be a fine bat. Oh, my poor ref. <laughs> what are you doing? Can we get this ref a map? Well, my problem isn't really with the ref here. Like, the ref is kind of supposed to be in the middle of the field. <laughs> my problem is, why is he throwing this on the ground when his receiver is, like... Being covered by the ref. <laughs> like, does he think the ref is a defender on this play, or <laughs> like he's he's throwing that like he's trying to throw it away from the well? Actually, no, he's not because he's throwing it right to the ref's knee. Uh, like, is he trying to injure? Is he trying to get like his guy to dive into the ref? Like, what? What is the point of placing this ball where you did? <laughs> I don't <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so, like it's almost like he threw this ball at the ref's knee on purpose. <laughs> Intentional rushing. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Mac Jones ref gate. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Very cool. That was fine. That was a pretty good throw. But like I was talking about with Lord, oh my goodness! Do you see that score? No. Seventy to forty-one. Oh hello. Hello. I believe that's what the MAC championship is. I think that's the game in the Garrett or Jared Patterson or whatever his name is had like five touchdowns and 400 yards or something. The running back. Something like this. <laughs> Derrick Henry type beat. Not quite, but. Oh, Derrick Henry got to do that this week, though. Yep. Yeah. Not if Jelani Defy can help it. So he's not doing a bad job in short yardage of leading the receiver. Uh, I guess. I mean, he can probably run on a San Francisco scheme. That's, you know what's funny is I was thinking about that a couple minutes ago. Uh, I mean, like a comparison I mean, to like a Jimmy Garoppolo type. Yeah, I mean they made Jimmy. I mean Shanahan and the pass rush made Jimmy Garoppolo a, almost a Super Bowl winning quarterback as a starter. Should mention the starter fact because Bill Belichick did that a couple times. But I mean they make Garoppolo look more than capable when in reality he's probably. Fairly similar skill set wise to a to a Mac Jones. Uh, I mean, I bet Jimmy. I'm not probably sure has, about. I, I've never been a fan of Jimmy. Really, I've always thought he was pretty overrated. I mean, he's still a top thirty two quarterback for sure. But I mean, that, that seems like a good upside for or a good ceiling for. Mac, a guy like Jimmy. Yeah, I guess. I just don't... I don't think that Mac Jones and, and Garoppolo's arm are comparable. I think Garoppolo has a much better arm. But... I don't think it's that much better. I mean, he might have a little bit of a better arm, but I don't think it's head and shoulders above Max anyway. I think they're pretty similar to the point where, yeah, mm. Jimmy might be a bit better, but he's also been in the NFL for five or six years now. So are you paying mm. Jimmy Garoppolo $25 million or taking Mac Jones in the second round? 
I'm taking Mac Jones and cutting Jimmy Garoppolo. Not too. necessarily I mean, cutting. I'm just saying, like, if you're like if Garoppolo were a free agent, and oh, the choices I'm between Mac, Garoppolo I'm and Mac Jones. Mac, I'm taking Mac Jones. I'm not willing to pay Jimmy Garoppolo that much money. Where when I can gra- grab a rookie QB and build around him, you know, be able to pay different talented players. You know, pay some receivers or pay a couple pass rushers and build that defense. Daniel? I mean, like, personally, it would depend, obviously, on, on what what Garoppolo's market value is, but personally, I'll I would 25 go much. million, just as a base. All right. Um... So you're paying Mac Jones I'd five choose the third option. I'd choose the third option. Whatever the third option is. So play like Chase Daniel. <laughs> so, because I don't like Mac Jones, and I don't like Jimmy Garoppolo at $25 million either. Okay, so you're playing Chase Daniel and you're benching David Blau. Huh? So your third option is keeping who's on the roster and playing what you already have, which would be Chase yeah. Daniel and David Blau. Yeah. Okay. I see. To me, Mac Jones is head, not really head, I wouldn't say head and shoulders, but to me, Mac Jones is much better than Chase Daniel and David Blau. Is he worth the pick that you would spend on him for the difference? I guess... That's that's a fair point. Pardon? So, D- Keelan said that he would rather have Matt Jones than Chase Daniel. So, I asked him if the difference between Chase Daniel and Matt Jones is worth a second-round pick. I, I That's a question that I, I don't know the answer to, personally. I, I don't... I honestly... It, it's really tough. I mean, I don't want Matt Jones to be my franchise quarterback. I also wouldn't want Jimmy Garoppolo to be my franchise quarterback. But but I'm 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 trying to decide whether it's worth it to spend a second round pick to replace Chase Daniel with a guy like Mac Jones. I mean like personally they're pretty similar to me, so I mean I'm like you want the second round pick to to spend on other things, so that would be the direction I would go in. So, this play is really interesting to me because it looks like he's looking at number four here. Yeah? Yeah. The ring back. Like, it looks like he's making that read. And then he just decides to throw this at double coverage. There it is. Maybe trying to look off of the defender. <laughs> it very clearly does not work because the defender drops with. You have a first down if you throw it to Brian Robinson, number four. And also, the defender has his back turned. Not that it really matters. You get a first down here. You're, on, you're at first and ten, up by thirty points almost. Twenty nine. Twenty. Nine points. Why are you throwing that into double coverage? Protect the football. Throw it. Throw it to your running back. You're probably going to get at least nine, eight or nine yards, if not the first down. That's just a stupid decision. That's a nice. Play. You have to find throw on the screen and run. Come get out. That's something. You know, an accurate throw. Velocity. Yeah, it's still a velocity problem. Even on this random ass screen. It's absolutely a velocity problem. If this is, for example, Zach Wilson, this ball is getting to that receiver, like now, and he's turning up field. And this guy is going to be able to take out this dude here. And this dude here is going to be able to push him down. And then number six, or whoever the equivalent is on BYU, is able to just attack. 
But then this guy now, misses I his put... block. He's caught jumping and having to reset his footwork. And he gets killed. Not necessarily killed, but he gets toggled yeah. or lost. Yeah. Now, I pose a question to you. The same one goes to you. Who do you what option do you take? That's a good throw. So, you know, the thing is with Mac Jones, like, he's good at this rainbow arcing type deep throw. But he still doesn't have the great velocity on, like, the lasers in, like, the intermediate to short areas of the field. Yeah. Was that all for that thought? Pardon? Was that all you had on that thought? Yeah. Okay, so to answer your question, Keelan, what I would do is I would just wait and take a wait around QB. Fair enough. I mean, I would prefer a guy like Desmond Ritter in the third or fourth round than Mac Jones. I already have Ritter above Jones, and he has the mobility upside. Like, if you're like the Steelers, and your choices are paying your free agent with the money that you save from Big Ben retiring, or drafting Matt Jones in at the bottom of the second, or uh, trading for Stafford. Well, in this case, we're not going to assume that Stafford is a realistic option because that would be the easiest option by far of the three. Uh, or picking like a later round quarterback, or playing whoever the heck is on the roster at the quarterback spot now. Mason Rudolph. I would probably just honestly play Mason Rudolph and bringing a quarterback on day three. I don't know what quarterbacks Brock Purdy maybe, and see what you can get out of guy like give me a guy like Jamie Newman who's probably gonna fall because they're not playing this year. Is he even declaring? I mean, I assume he opted out with the intention of getting the draft like early, early this year. Uh, but I mean, he, he might just return him to start at Georgia next year. I, I honestly don't know. So, uh, you say you wanted to Ole Miss, right? Yeah, sure. No worries. That's the other game that we haven't watched of his. Only four incompletions this game. Interesting. Yeah, this Ole defense is really bad. Like, honestly, probably. It, I'm pretty sure, according to statistics, it's one of the worst in, in all of college football, not just Power 5. Uh, you can get a bunch of easy completions when you run. Jet touches. That was a nice pass, though. From all the talk about all the screens that Clemson runs, I feel like Alabama has run more. Yeah. They do. And I mean, Clemson runs a few screens, but I didn't really see it that often. I mean, there was a few, probably maybe five a game, but this has happened quite more significantly. I don't know, like, jet touch passes, like, plays like that, they're just, like, little, tiny, behind-the-line scrimmage throws. That, how did he see him out until the crap? Uh, there's another one. Like, yeah, you're going to get 80% completion when all you do is throw passes behind-the-line scrimmage.
like, yeah, cool, I'll get ready. Not gonna be that cool. Wow, Devontae Smith in the one on one. It's like your only receiver running around. <laughs> like, I mean, it's. Well, Wayne. Yikes. Like, yeah, Devontae Smith getting wide open again. A good portion of the plays that we're seeing are handoffs, screens, or jets. Yeah. And I mean, he can run an offense like that just fine, which leads me to believe he would probably be most successful in a system like San Francisco, where a lot of that is consistent on, you know, short pass play action, outside zone handoffs. It's also the type of thing that you would run if you were in the NFL and had a backup quarterback coming in. Yeah, well, obviously he's not an ideal starter, but for a team like San Francisco, who who predominantly spends their capital on, you know, defense and now receiver, I mean, he's a fine day two guy that you can you can grab and you can you know build a stack roster without, and you you don't have to pay your quarterback twenty five million dollars or thirty million dollars a year. Especially with a guy like um you're gonna have to start paying Nick Bosa. And if you didn't have Garoppolo's contract, you would have been able to keep DeForest Buckner on the team. I feel like of the 28 completions that he's had, or that he's going to have, they're all screens. Probably like 20 of them are within or before five yards of the line of scrimmage. I concur. Jeez. Which really is a shame because it kind of limits what they can call on offense. Yeah. And like, look how look how look how long it takes him to read this. He sees this at this point in the play. Now he makes a good decision to go off the screen because the screen you have a two on two. So you're not throwing this. That's a good decision. But as soon as he reads midfield. And sees this guy. Okay, so you wait for this guy here. What are you? Doing? You should be throwing that ball now. And he waits, and he waits, and he's just now starting his motion as the guy's about to kill him. And he takes a huge hit. Like people like to talk about, like how all the mobile quarterbacks are the guys that love to take hits and stuff. Like everyone talks about, oh my God, Lamar Jackson is always going to be hurt because he takes a lot of hits because he runs. And the same yeah. thing with Justin Fields, and same thing with insert mobile quarterback 2016, whoever it is. For, for whatever reason, there is some false narrative out there that Dwayne Haskins was mobile. These guys, these mobile sure. guys, take hits that they're. Because they're running around all the time. If you hold on to the ball for 5 million years in the pocket, you are more likely... Well, okay, I'll, I'm not going to say more. You are just as likely to get injured on this play as you are running forward for a first down slugging. So basically, according to mainstream football fans, if you're black, you're more likely to get hurt in football. Whether that's 
a racial thing or whether that's just simply basing it off of uh, RG3 and, I guess, Deshaun Watson. I think so. But Watson's injuries oh, weren't the one he was running, though, were they? Huh? I don't even think Watson got injured when he was running. I think the yeah, injuries that he took were in the pocket. A, not, it was in... No, um, I believe Watson's injury was a non-contact injury in, pr- in practice. The one uh, that he Burrow's suffered in Houston was, was in game. Or was it? I think that... Well, it was a non-contact injury, I believe. Burrow's injury was when the offensive lineman pushed the defensive lineman into his knee and tore his ACL. That was Joe Burrow. And then there was so it the could very well Tom Brady in 2007 when he stood in the pocket. And then there was the one yeah. with Teddy Bridgewater and when he injured his knee, which I don't think was running. And then there was the one with Alex Smith. And I don't remember if he was running or not. I thought it was just a sack, but I could be wrong. Aaron Rodgers has had hard for yep. many injuries. Drew Brees has had... What ten million injuries the last three years? It seems like. Yeah. I mean, he's not playing right now because of broken ribs or whatever. I mean, he's out for can, the season. can I jump in here for a sec? Yeah. Uh, the another reason why I think that mobile quarterbacks often get stigmatized as having more injuries is that they're generally built like here. Like, no one was talking about Josh Allen being being an injury risk, despite the fact that he was just as mobile as a lot of the other quarterbacks in, in draft classes because he built, like, a freaking bank. Whereas, like, a guy like Lamar, it's like, eh, it's a little bit more questionable because, because he's built lanky. He's not built like a tank. Like Mac Jones or like or like Josh Allen. Okay, is Mac Jones really built like a tank? Is the question? Because I don't know. I mean, he's a fine size. I don't think tank is the correct. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that could be a factor. He's 6'3", 215. I mean, not much of a tank to me. And wasn't Lamar 6'2", 220? Uh, give me a second here. Lamar He's 6'12", is... now, but I think he waited up for the combine. Yeah, six, I mean, he's, what, an inch shorter than Mac and three pounds... Lighter? Officially two pounds, but that's as of this year. I think he came in heavier for the combine. Yeah, but I'm not too concerned. But yeah, he's not a tank. Why is my animal taking so long to load? <laughs> yep. uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't want to load. But I for, I, not for some reason, I feel like he came in at like 217 or 218 because he wanted to hit like the, two, the magic, super mystical 220 number. Yeah. As if, like, for whatever reason, 220, it's kind of like the lines of the linebackers. Like how uh, the, you have to be over, like, 240 pounds. Like, if you're, like, 5'11", you know, and 78, and 239 pounds, they're somehow too small. He, uh, he came in at 216. Okay, okay, so yeah, he has dropped a couple pounds. He was heavier than Mac, though. Yeah. If he... You're not 250 pounds. If you're not 250 to 260, maybe 245. Fuck you. <laughs> you're not like 
but anyway, getting back to the point, um, if he holds on the ball this long, he's going to get killed. I don't care if you're playing behind the Dallas line, I don't care if you're playing behind the Detroit line, which is very good, I don't care if you're playing behind the Cleveland line, which apparently is now number one, I don't care if you're playing behind freaking the Jets line. You are going to get killed. Yep. And the reason for that is because he has a wide open receiver here, and he takes yep. forever to make this throw. Throw should be thrown now. Not now. Like, you should already be in your motion at the latest at this point in the play. The ball should be out by You're already starting to cross this guy. Yeah. Got him. Double check. Yeah, that's way too late. That's like two seconds too late almost. Well, two seconds is a long time. Okay. I, I, I was exaggerating, but still, that's way too late to be, to be even starting the turn motion. The ball should be out by the time his motion even started. I wonder how they got 49 points. I don't remember him scoring seven touchdowns. I assume not. She had a great game. That's an interesting new thrown ball. Look at all this space, though. There's like yards of space here. I mean, somehow this is almost, well, it actually is actually really well contested. By 21. He has a really nice show with the hand placement as the corner there. Good catch by But think Warren. about it this way. But think about it this way. It gives. Alabama wide receivers an opportunity to pad their highlight plate. <laughs> that's true. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Mac Jones is doing a service to everybody by that. Yeah. It also gives the Alabama wide receivers a chance to get absolutely murdered because he can't throw a good enough ball. <laughs> So, uh, your guys' thoughts while we wait for this page to slow. My thoughts are that he's a very interesting prospect who's severely overrated if any, by anyone who thinks he should be a first-round quarterback. I'm okay. I understand that there's position value, but that does not mean you should be taking a, a backup quarterback in the first round when there's so many good football players that you could take that aren't named Mac Jones and that yeah, that's that. Daniel? Yeah. Oh um to be honest I I called him Mike Glennon before the stream started. I now think that was too generous of a comp, if anything. Very good. I think that his real comp, and the comp I'll be sticking with, is Dan Olovsky. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, so, I mean, oh, like... That's, that's amazing. So I mean, like it's a mid, it's a mid-round quarterback. 
if you just want someone to sit on your bench and like and like be like Helen Moore was for us and, and just like draw plays on the whiteboard and like talk to your your actual two B one and give him tips. Maybe Mac Jones can do that. I don't know. I don't I don't know his his locker room tendencies and whatnot, but like maybe he could get an NFL job doing that, but he sure as heck isn't getting an NFL job since dark. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm pretty sure he's a captain in Alabama, so I'm not, I have zero concerns about character and work ethic and all that stuff. I mean, yeah, he's going to be a fine, he'll probably get a coaching job, but. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll let you get into your grades and stuff. Cool. So, roll grade for me is going to be. Uh, I don't want to necessarily say capable. Uh, I call it capable backup. Concerns grade. Uh, not really a huge concern with size. I'm not going to be hypocritical and talk about how I thought Lamar was just flying and Matt Jones isn't. Because, as we talked about, they're kind of similarly sized. Um, what else concern grades could I possibly have? No real character issues. Athleticism is an issue for me. I definitely don't think he has the athleticism to be able to survive like we talked about a couple times. Uh, medical concerns are not really a huge issue. Playbook, definitely not an issue. Special teams are not playing a quarterback on special teams. Uh, mental toughness is not an issue and no size. So the main one for me is the athleticism. Player comparison for me, I'm going to bring up a game that nobody has said yet. And that is someone who has actually looked not as terrible as I thought they were going to at the NFL level. Uh, and that is Daniel Jones. Uh, the current You're disrespecting my man. Hmm? You're disrespecting my man. I love myself some Daniel Jones. Uh, <laughs> he has been a lot better than I was expecting. Uh, he was Than he was going to be out of two. He hasn't been a world bigger. But uh, the Giants are in playoff position right now at 5-8. and eight. I think it is. Yeah, I mean, they're in division contention, but they have a difficult schedule coming up, so I I believe it's going to be the Washington football team who win the division. <laughs> At 6-10 and 10 or 7-9. and nine. <sighs> Anyway, uh, so yeah, very similar. Ron Rivera, the GOAT. So very oh, similar in terms of style there. Uh, both guys were pocket passers with some potential, but uh, not really for me. Uh, I have some concerns specifically about the arm strength about both of them. Biggest strength for me... um, I do think Daniel Jones is more mobile than Matt Jones. Oh, yeah, Daniel Jones is much more mobile than Matt Jones, for sure. Uh, Which is why Daniel Jones is better than Matt Jones. That's more of a ceiling. But in terms of, like, passing, like, for example, when we did, like, the Justin Fields thing, like, mm, the straight lanes thing, that was the bigger one. Like, when we did, like, straight yeah. lanes. Like, Jared Goff is, like, straight lanes is much more mobile than Jared Goff is. But in terms of, like, style of system that I'd like to see them in, uh, very similar. Same thing with Trask. Trask is more mobile than Philip Rivers. Now, Trask is not the most mobile guy ever. Well, he's more mobile than Philip Rivers. Uh, just more so in terms of passing elements, the kind of system and passing <coughs> style that I think that they should be playing in. Same thing with Matt Jones. I think in terms of system that you're going to be running, that's a very similar system to what you would want to build your team around if you had Daniel Jones. Uh, biggest strength is touch. Biggest weakness is velocity, which is a big one. Yeah. Uh, Floor and ceiling, I'm going to go with a medium floor and a low ceiling. Yeah, that's what I did earlier when I watched him first. That was my bus potential is probably like 75-ish percent. Ouch. Uh, 
based on where he's expected to go in that late first to early second round range. Uh, games watched, we watched Georgia, then we watched, um, oh, I can't remember. Ole Miss? Yeah, Ole Miss was the third game. And then... Uh, I don't remember. We might have to look at the uh, history. Auburn. Auburn, okay. Oh, that's right. Okay, now time for the Nats open part. And I guess I said one part for Trevor Lawrence, Nats open part for this one. Uh, mental traits are like, I don't know, a 20. That might be kind of generous. Uh, yeah, I would say that's generous personally. This is a B minus or a 6.6. Arm strength is like 15, which is a D minus and a 6.2. Arm accuracy is like a 21. Is a B and a six point seven and mobility is like ten. Rip, which is an F minus. Five point seven. to see. So, um, with that being said, I will let you guys go over your grades for him um, while I calculate my scores, which will take a lot more work than any video so far this year. You go ahead, Daniel. I'm doing the same thing currently. Okay, Ouch. Yeah. Let's see, on tank letting 15 is pretty good. I think you would be generous a little bit on mental traits. Uh, it's like an 18 for me. Um, accuracy is 21. I guess that's okay, but like still a little bit generous for me. 19. Mobility, like. <sighs> You can move within the context of the pocket, okay. So I do think that mobility is a little bit too... Well, that's how he got his 10 points. Too harsh. I would say, like, mobility is like a 14. Because he's still not, like, a block Osweiler in terms of being able to move within the pocket. He, he can still, like, make little adjustments and and occasionally step into the pocket and whatnot. So, to be fair, Brock would, be my... would probably get a one. Pardon? I said, to be fair, Brock Osweiler would probably get a one out of us. Fair enough. Sorry, were you done, Daniel, or did you have something else? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm done. So, my uh, final score ended up being a 66. Oh, dang, that was higher than me after further review. I, I I finished off with a 62, which is an F grade for me. There's a solid D. 62, pardon me. I don't know if I said 52 or 62. But um, do, you, do you want me to go over my grades now or after your sentence? In one second, I'm going to calculate 6662. Uh, 6, 7, and 5, 7, which is 25.2 divided by 4, which is a 6.3 on the nose. Mm. 
which works out to a high end D, which is, yeah, about where, so my D is 65 to 66, or I mean 60 to a, a 6.2 to 6.3, which is 60 to 68. So that is on the higher end of 60 to 68, so that I'll check that out. Cool. So yeah, 66, which is a D, which is a 6.3. So we're talking needs work, bench player, uh, fourth round type of guy, fifth round type of guy for me. Cool. You go. Uh, do you want me to go over mine now? or? Yeah. All right, so for arm strength, they gave him a 14. From accuracy, I gave him a 19. For mental traits, I gave him an 18. And for mobility, I gave him an 11. Which, that ends up being about a 62, which is more of a more of a camp body type guy for me. Bottom of a roster type guy. Uh, yeah, my border, so I have 52 to 60 as special teams. And 40 uh -huh. to 52 as bottom of roster, and 40 or lower as camp body. To me, yeah, uh, no, to, to be honest with you, I'm going to be changing this up after, after. I haven't really experimented with too many lower prospects, because I've been watching a lot of the better ones. So I imagine this to be a, a more of a develop, de yeah, developmental player. Rather than, yeah, I think he ends um, up with, with bench, like a higher end bench guy. Yeah, which doesn't obviously bench and role player for me are different. So like I don't even have him like rotational grade. Like I have him like actual bench grade. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let me but, put my orange on. What are you gonna say, Keel? Um. I was going to say, regardless of that, I feel like he's a day three guy for me, to be honest. Yep. And I'm not a fan at all. Daniel? Pardon? Where do you stand in terms of draft stock? Where would you take him? Um, probably fifth round. Okay, so that's the same as us. Assuming... Assuming he checks out as like this high IQ backup type thing where about you can just like be he can just sit on your bench and help your QB one through uh, through stuff like a Dan Olotsky or a Kellen Moore. Yeah, I mean I, I, I honestly like I, I if I'm a team Team like I don't know uh, what team has a solid QB that fits. I, I don't know. I'm blanking. Maybe a team like the Chargers, for example, who really don't need a quarterback, but a guy that can play can be a, ba a solid backup and you know help out Herbert for the entirety of his career, really. Uh, I mean, you can have him for four years, and I, I, he's not going to be asking for too much because he's not a talented player. But, you know, just have a backup for a guy that, you know, is going to be there in your, your future. Yeah. All right, you ready to move on to the one second summary? Yeah, so I'm going to go first on this one. Uh, potential to develop accuracy, accuracy and mental traits, but trash arm. I really hope Mac Jones doesn't some for some reason find this YouTube video. I wouldn't be surprised if some players have. Yeah, I mean, they probably search up their name and see, hey, what are people talking about with regards to me? But anyways, if you're watching this, Mac, I'm sorry. Please get better so we can root for you. 
I, I mean, like I said, I compare him to Daniel Jones, and we've seen what Daniel Jones has been able to do. Uh, the potential to develop with the right coaching staff, I think, is ultimately there. Uh, you just really got to find the, the people that are going to be able to be patient and develop him. And, like, no one thought that Tom Brady was going to be good when Tom Brady came out. So there's an element of patience and, like, uh, any quarterback, whisperer, guru type of guy will be able to work some of these things. Like, I mean, get him with the NFL facility. His arm strength will go up a little bit. Work on some of those mobility traits that pressure recognition and things like that. The mobility will end up getting better. Uh, and and just working on, on that area during the off season, working on that mobility. We've seen Stafford get faster over the course of his career. So working on those types of things uh, over time, I think, will help. Uh, with him, but yeah, it's it's like he has the potential in a couple of areas. It's just, man, it's so frustrating to watch some of the stuff and like some of the easier throws to, uh, just the inconsistency there is is rather disappointing for me. Anyone? Um. I guess I'll jump in with my one sentence summary. Uh, probably a career backup level arm strength and physical tools. But Chris, what time is it? Has I got to know. I can't see you. I'm sorry, guys. Keep talking. My grandma's... Sorry. Keep going. Um, My dog is sick. Put... Our career backup potential to develop... Just say the name. I mean, sorry. Two? One? Um, one? Two. Daniel, keep talking, please. Um... Career backup potential to develop uh, into a solid, um, a solid spot starter. Cool. Um, is that it? Yeah. I said future backup with very large arm strength concerns. Good touch, but not a high upside QB. Not a future starter in the NFL. Um. If uh, to me, you know, uh, I'm sure he can improve his accuracy and at least be a guy who can, you know, be a spot starter. But at this, at the, at this t- at the time, at this time, he he really doesn't have that that ability. And I'd be very surprised if an an NFL team drops him in the first or second round. I wouldn't be necessarily surprised if an NFL team drafts him in the first or second round, just because of the nature of the quarterback position. Yeah, but you can do so much better. Yeah, probably, especially with the other five guys that we uh, referenced earlier, with Wilson, Trask, Lance, Lawrence, and Fields. Yeah. So, anyone else here have uh, any closing thoughts before we wrap this one up? I don't, personally. Daniel? I don't. All right, you guys. Well, apologies about my grandmother. Uh, I know that we've gotten a lot of negative comments surrounding her appearance in our videos. Uh, it's just unfortunate that we have to deal with some of this stuff sometimes, especially uh, during this coronavirus pandemic that we're going through right now. So hopefully you guys are staying safe, staying healthy. Uh, and, and making sure you guys are able to check in on your loved ones as well, uh, wherever you're at. And, uh, and, and most importantly, just staying safe and, and healthy, uh, during this very difficult year for everybody. So, uh, with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, learned a thing or two along the way. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this over the course of the next coming days, weeks, and months as we head into the 2021 NFL Draft moving forward. Uh, but for now, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, but for now, peace out.